So in this video, we're going to talk in depth about the universal control beta. How does it work? How many devices can you use it with? And much, much more. So let's take a look at universal control in the Mac OS beta in depth. All right, so Universal Control, of course, works with Macs and iPads. And as you can see, I have a whole stack of Macs and iPads here that we're going to be testing this out with. And I'll even show you some tips and handy tricks. So, of course, Universal Control was revealed at WWDC 2021. Craig Federighi showcased it in action on a video between a Mac and an iPad and an iMac as well. So Universal Control Beta works very similarly to what Craig showed in that video. So you have a single like mouse and keyboard attached to a main Mac, and then you can use that to control other devices like an iPad or another Mac. So here you can see I'm using the keyboard and mouse for my Mac to fully control my iPad Pro. But not only can you control devices, you can also drag and drop files between devices. So I can drag an image from my Mac to my iPad and vice versa as well. So I can drag from my iPad back to the Mac. So on the Mac, you'll need to be running the Mac OS 12.3 beta and on the iPad, you need to be running iPad OS 15.4 beta one or higher. So as I stated before, it's in the name. Universal control allows you to control an iPad or a Mac from your main mouse and keyboard. But what it doesn't allow you to do is to use that iPad or Mac as an external display. For instance, here I have the finder window on my Mac. I can't drag that over to my iPad. Same thing goes for Safari window. I can't drag a Safari window from the Mac to the iPad. With that being said, you can use your Mac or your iPad as an external display for your main Mac. If you go to System Preferences Displays, you'll see the option to add a display, and there I can invoke Sidecar for the iPad and use it as an external display. And for Macs, I can set up an external AirPlay destination and use that as an external display as well. Now let's talk about device compatibility. So Universal Control works with the MacBook Pro 2016 or later, MacBook 2016 or later, MacBook Air 2018 or later, iMacs, iMac Pro and so on, right? The main takeaway is that Universal Control will also work with Intel Macs as well, as you can see. UC works with the iPad Pro, iPad Air third generation or later, iPad sixth generation or later, or iPad mini five or later. So pretty well-rounded list. It'll work with iMacs, it'll work with the MacBook Pro, of course, it'll work with the Mac mini, uh, it'll work with all types of iPads, and even Intel Macs, as you can see right here. That's really cool. Now, there are some additional requirements you'll need to keep in mind. First and foremost, you need to have all devices logged into iCloud with the same Apple ID. So that's important across all devices you want to use universal control with. Now, you also want to make sure that cursor and keyboard beta is enabled under general AirPlay and handoff. That should be enabled by default on your iPads, but that is a requirement as well. So here I have universal control running on my iPad, on my MacBook Pro 14 inch in this setup right here. You can see it easy peasy. Now how to invoke universal control. Now the obvious way to invoke universal control is to push your mouse cursor through from your main Mac over to an iPad or another Mac. As you can see right here, there's a little indicator showing that I'm pushing through with the cursor and then you just push all the way through and that starts the universal control session between those two devices. So now I can control my iPad using the mouse and keyboard connected to my Mac. Super simple, super easy. And of course I can move the cursor back and forth between both devices. That is great. So it's not just limited to the iPad. You can do the same thing with another Mac as long as it's an eligible Mac. So here's my MacBook Pro. And again, just simply push through with my mouse cursor all the way over and there we go now i can move those between the two and look universal control also works with ipads in portrait mode as you can see right here so I just move my mouse all the way through while oriented in portrait mode and even mac os will reflect that the ipad is in portrait mode just like that so that can be handy when browsing a twitter or other timeline based app so all you need to do is open up system preferences and then go to where it says displays and then you'll see add display in the bottom left hand corner. You want to click on that and then you'll see a heading link keyboard and mouse. So your eligible devices will be right underneath that heading. So I have my iPad Pro and silver, which is my 14 inch MacBook Pro. So I just click iPad Pro and then you can see right there it connects to my iPad Pro and that's displayed right there within the display preferences. Now. I recommend going to System Preferences, Dock and Menu Bar, and then selecting Display. 
and then choosing to show in menu bar and selecting always instead of when active. That way you can quickly access the display shortcut from the menu bar and enable or disable universal control just like this. So we just click the little airplay icon there in the menu bar and there you see a link keyboard and mouse too. So there you can quickly enable or disable universal control with just a click if you don't wanna use the push through method. So here I can click to enable my iPad Pro 12.9 inch and I can also do so with silver which is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, just click there and both of those will be enabled just like that. And you can also click to disable if you like. So when you go back to display preferences, you can see that both of those devices are enabled. So we know we can control iPads and Macs, but one of the benefits of universal control is being able to move your cursor across the entire setup. So I had it on my iPad and move over to my main Mac and then move right over to the MacBook Pro 14 inch, just like that. But you can also move items directly from an iPad here in Procreate and move that over to my Mac in Keynote, drop it just like that, and there you go. Super simple, super easy. Illustrate on your iPad, move to your Mac. Now in this example, I can move all the way across, all the way over to my other MacBook Pro, drop in the Final Cut Pro like that, pretty cool. But also you can control other devices with each of the inputs available to you. So here on the iPad, I have the Magic Keyboard. I can use that to control my Macs. Granted, at least in this beta, you don't get all the gesture support with the iPad Magic Keyboard on the Mac, so just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about some universal control advanced preferences. So if we go to displays and then we select advanced, there you will see the advanced preferences for universal control. So the first option is basically just a global setting to allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac or iPad. So that basically is enabling or disabling universal control outright. That option must be enabled. Now the second option, push through the edge of a display to connect to a nearby Mac or iPad. That's basically that manual push through with your cursor. You can enable or disable that. If you disable it, you'll have to use the display preferences or the mini bar shortcut to connect to other devices. And then this last option, automatically reconnect to any nearby Mac or iPad. So if a previous connection was made, this will basically resume that connection once you bring the iPad or Mac back online. So you can see I have it connected here. When I close the lid, you can see display preferences that goes away. Now when I reopen, you'll notice it automatically reconnects. I don't have to do anything manually just like that. Now it's important to note that universal control is not spatially aware. It doesn't know where one device is in relation to another. So for instance, if I invoke universal control on the left side of my main Mac, even though my iPad is situated on the right side, it has no idea where it is. So you'll see it come through on the right side of the iPad. And then when I go to display preferences, you can see the iPad is located on the left but it's actually on the right. You see what I'm saying here? So you don't actually have spatial awareness. Now the good news is that in Mac OS 12.3 beta, there's hints of ultra wideband technology coming to Macs. And that could be one potential use case for having ultra wideband technology in a Mac. It would know where exactly that Mac is in relation to other devices, assuming those other devices also have ultra wideband chips inside. But thankfully you can manually rearrange devices via the display preferences here. So all you do, you simply just click and drag any of the universal control connected devices. So here I can just drag this MacBook Pro. You can know it's a MacBook Pro by the menu bar at the top, by the way, iPads don't have the menu bar, but you can simply drag and rearrange to your liking. So if, if the arrangement is off, like I showed you earlier, you can manually rearrange to fix it. Now what happens when you remove a device in the middle that's between your main Mac and another device? So with iPad on the left side, the MacBook Pro in the middle. So when I break that chain, universal control will automatically reconfigure, at least it should. I've noticed some bugs, but again, just keep in mind that this is still in beta. Trick question, how many devices are supported by universal control at the same time? Well, I'm gonna go ahead, you see I have two devices connected, my main Mac and my iPad. I'm gonna to try to connect a third and silver connects. So that's my MacBook Pro. I'm gonna to try to connect a fourth now and look what error I get. Unable to connect to user's MacBook Pro to connect to user's MacBook Pro, disconnect another device. So it appears you can only have three devices connected in total. For instance, if I try to add a fourth device via display preferences, I don't get an error, but nothing happens at all. So what to do about all those devices? Well. Let me show you something here. So 
I'm going to push through manually on the first Mac, and now I have two Macs connected. I'm gonna push through on that Mac to my iPad, and now I have three devices connected, an iPad, two Macs. Now, iPads serve as termination points, so you can't actually invoke universal control from an iPad. So I have four devices, two MacBooks, an iPad, and now I have a MacBook connected to the iPad on the right side, so five total devices. But the problem is, like I said, iPad serve as termination points. You can't invoke universal control from an iPad. So what to do? Well, I had to simply manually rearrange so that the Macs are at the end of the chain, so to speak, and then I can continue to add devices via the Mac at the end of the chain. Does that make sense? All right, so now that I have that Mac moved over, I can add, yes indeed, another iPad for three devices on the left side for a total of six devices. And now I'm gonna add another iPad on the right side for a total of seven devices. That's all the devices I have, folks. So you can see all seven of these devices connected via universal control. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be a thing in the actual shipping version, but in the beta, yeah, you can add all seven devices and watch my cursor as I move it between all these devices. I can control all of them via one input method, my magic mouse, magic keyboard. Sorry for the shaky cam, but as you can see, moving across all devices. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you could connect universal control and sidecar at the same time? Yeah, you can't do that normally because macOS simply doesn't allow you to, but I've noticed a glitch and I can get this glitch working with a little bit of, uh, of persistence here. I'm able to actually have both the universal control and sidecar enabled at the same time. You can see them right here. You can see my iPad 12.9 inch has both the sidecar which is right here and universal control at the same time. So that means that I can see my cursor here on my Mac. I can move that over. That's universal control, same input. And I can launch other apps, of course, controlling with my Mac's keyboard and mouse. And then I can also launch sidecar and use the iPad Pro as an external display just like this. So that's pretty cool, right? But obviously this is just a bug or a glitch. I can repeat it and I can actually reproduce it, but it does take a little bit of work on my end to make that happen. Uh, nonetheless, I would like to see this as an actual feature in future versions of macOS. What do you guys think? So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a deep dive with universal control. What do you guys think about this feature? Do you think it's truly useful? Will you use it day to day? Let me know. And also, if you appreciated this deep dive, if you appreciate videos like this, then be sure to thumbs up because that allows other people to know that, hey, this video is legit. So folks, I will catch you in an upcoming video. Stay tuned. We have much more Mac content around the corner. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. Take care.